Oh, good morning, ladies. I'm still waking up, but it's like 8.50. I should probably be awake by now. Anyways, okay, so in today's video, I want to get all nerdy on you. I promise I'd give you some nutrition and uh, tips, like actual like education stuff. And before I get to this, I think this is so important to know. It's always like knowledge first, but then you got to apply it to your real life and realize you can't be perfect with everything because we're not living in a bubble of perfection. So take this with a grain of salt, sort of, I mean, it's real stuff. Don't take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But anyways, just embrace it and then say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm able to work on this aspect of things and not this and just kind of focus and know that this is your baseline of understanding um, and kind of move on from there. Okay, so let me just jump straight in. So I want to talk about macro and micronutrients. Oh, I'm losing you, right? No, I'm just kidding. Um, these are kind of the foundations of how our body is built and it's all about the food that we eat and finding that balance. So I want to talk about macronutrients first. You actually probably know what this is. This is carbs, fats, and proteins. And when you got your package in the mail, you got those containers that are the red container, the green container, the purple container, the blue container, all those kind of things. So those are focusing on carbs, fats, and proteins. Fruits and vegetables are actually technically a carbohydrate. They're, um, it's either a simple carb or a complex carb. I can't remember, but um, different things are like white bread is a complex carb and Grapes would be a simple carb. I can't remember which one is which, but they're all carbohydrates too. So, and interestingly enough, um, all foods actually have a balance of it. So like a banana, for example, is like 95% a carb and then like 3% of protein and 2% of fat, something like that. Whereas an avocado is made up of like 80% fat and 15% protein. Those portions are off a little bit, but it's kind of interesting to know that that's what the building blocks of your food are made up of. So we need that and we need balance. We don't need an equal amount of carbs, fats, and proteins. So that's kind of why I really love the portion fix plan because it tells you, okay, you need this many servings of vegetables, this many servings of healthy fat, this many servings of healthy proteins and so on to find that balance. Now, is that the perfect, perfect balance, the ratio? You really got to figure that out for your body. It's a great baseline to start with and it's really cool to learn how to measure things so that you can see what a serving size actually looks like because if you're saying oh i need servings five servings of protein a day well what does a serving look like it's really good to have that knowledge and to play with and to touch your food so that when you portion it you're doing that correctly okay and then you have to kind of tweak it to fit your body a little bit so those are your macronutrients and then we have micronutrients which are the vitamins and the minerals and the trace um minerals and um, phytonutrients and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go over super quick what all this stuff is and really just give you that overall understanding of nutrition. And I'd really, really love to hear your feedback on this to know what did you already know about this? What's totally new information? And where did you learn it? Did you learn this in science class in high school? Or is this something you've kind of gathered over the years? And I'll kind of tell you what I knew and what I didn't know. Um, cause I think this stuff is really, really interesting. So macronutrients, if we look at those, we've got our carbs, stats, and proteins. And so why do you need these? If you've ever thought about that. So carbs provide energy for the brain. Interestingly enough, your brain can't hold energy. It needs new energy all the time because it's always using it. And we kind of need our brains to work because that makes the rest of our body work. That's even our mental health, right? And we don't even think about that. So if there's not enough energy, the body will start to break down other things um, including amino acids, which we actually need. And sometimes using ketones in the bodies, if you've heard about that stuff, but a lot of times that can re result in too much acid in the brain. So it's better if it's glucose. And glucose is basically all the carbohydrates are broken down into the energy source of glucose, okay? But not all carbs are great for the brain and the body. Those refined white stuff, um, those things that are like super, super starchy vegetables. If you have too, sorry, if you have too much of carbs, like then you'll go over that. Okay. But when we're talking about refined, you know, sugars and all that stuff, those aren't the best source of carbs for your body to be able to use. Okay. But carbs are super necessary. Carbs are not evil. And if you look in the portion fix guide on the beach body on demand or in the booklet, um, it gives you great food lists of good, healthy carbs. And it starts at the top at the more nutrient-rich ones, and then it goes down from there. But don't be afraid of sweet potatoes. Don't be afraid of all those kind of things. And don't be afraid of quinoa and oatmeal and all that stuff. Even bread 
as long as you're getting like the good sources. Okay, the second one is protein, which is interesting. This is what actually our body is made up of, okay? So like your muscles and just your body in general. And this also helps the brain as well. Um, protein, Americans actually get too much protein a lot of times. You may think that you need more protein and that's kind of just the diet culture we're in has got us obsessed over protein. Like you need protein shakes and we need this and we need this. And that's all we talk about. And if you take a step back, it's like, oh, that is kind of weird. Why do we always think that we need more protein? So just kind of thinking about that. The last one is fats. So important to have healthy fats. And in fact, little kids, 30% of their diet needs to be healthy fats. Like it's a higher percentage of that. Um, than we may even think about. So fats really help your brain health. They actually help your body absorb the nutrients that you take in. And nutrients, I'm talking vitamins, minerals, plant stuff. So interestingly enough, when you eat stuff, your body doesn't necessarily absorb it. And that means like take it out of your intestinal tract or your stomach and like let it go into your bloodstream and flow throughout the rest of your body to nourish your cells. Well, you don't always absorb things. And that's something that happens too. Like if we have people that are really unhealthy, you may be eating the exact same nutrients that somebody else is, but you may not be absorbing it. And your body will change over time as you continue to eat healthier. But that's one interesting thing kind of about your body. Um, and then we have micronutrients. And those are all of our vitamins, um, and so on. So let me give you kind of a little overview of this. And again, don't feel like you need to obsess over this. You don't need to start reading labels to make sure you get your daily percentage of vitamin A and vitamin K and like all that stuff. You don't need to over obsess about this, but it's good to have knowledge. So vitamins A, B, C, D, E, K, and carotene, um, carotene, sorry, is an interesting idea that we're like, oh, everybody's obsessed over vitamin C, but nobody ever talks about vitamin E, which is kind of interesting. Minerals, you have boron, calcium, manganese, magnesium, potassium, selenium, sodium, copper, cobalt, fluoride, chromium, iodine, zinc. Yes, Evelyn. Um, and those are all, if you guys remember from the periodic table, we need all of those. And then organic acid, so acidic acid, citric acid, lactic acid, malic acid, choline, and taurine. Okay. Um, and all of these micronutrients are showing up in our fruits and vegetables. And they actually do show up in uh, grass fed meats, raw nuts, wild fish, um, and different raw organic, um, or sorry, not organic, raw, but different dairy products, all those kind of things. And micronutrient foods are really important because you don't need them as much. You don't need micronutrients as much in as big of quantities as you do with your carbs, fats, and proteins. But if you don't have those, those are a lot of times where we're getting all of our health problems, where we're getting our mental health problems, where we're getting um, just different like deficiencies in vitamins will lead to, you know, maybe like you have joint problems or maybe you have sugar cravings or maybe you have like just the different things that we have problems with are because there's a lack of nutrients. And the sad thing is that nowadays if we eat super processed, we don't get those good vitamins and the companies will try to make, recreate those like chemically and um, like by, you know, using scientifically, you remember all the like things in science class that like, I don't know when they make the little, I don't know, you know, you know, those little like circle things and they connect. I'm sure if any of you guys are scientists, you're laughing at me right now, but, um, they'll chemically make these compounds and put them in your food, but it doesn't really, your body doesn't absorb them. Like it does. If like vitamin C comes from an orange will actually be absorbed rather than if vitamin C comes in a pill. And that's kind of the big deal that I really caution you if you're doing shakes or protein bars or different like taking vitamins, you really have to take a step back and say, well, what is the point of this? And where are these nutrients coming from? When you read the ingredients level, like is the ingredients like just a list of the scientific vitamin name? Like that's meaning it's synthetically created or is it a list of foods that have those vitamins in them naturally? Um, and a lot of times the idea with these protein shakes are kind of a problem too because they're, they're taking like whey protein or soy protein and they're just like isolating the protein and you're just taking straight up the protein. Well, that's not really what your body needs. Like your body needs protein from real food sources and um, a lot of those shakes will put, you know, different vitamins in there that are synthetically created, but then they don't taste good, right? And they don't have the consistency that we like. And so then they'll add all those fillers to make it into this shake that you want to eat. And you think you're being super healthy when maybe not. And so that's the difference. And that's one thing too, like 
when I recommended Shakeology, like this was a big deal. Like this is kind of against where I go with things because of the protein shake stuff. So Shakeology is not at all a protein shake. And the goal behind it are those specific uh, micronutrients. So I challenge you, like when you get your bag, take a second and spend some time reading all these here. So it talks about the protein blend. There is protein in it, but it's from chia peas, sacha and chi, flax, quinoa, rice, and oats. And then the superfruit antioxidant blend, which is camu, camu, acerola cherry, bilberry, um, goji berry, green tea, lohangao, pomegranate, and rose hips. Okay. Then you have your phytonutrients, which I was talking about, moringa, corella, spinach, kale, and matcha. You've probably heard of matcha green tea. Then your adaptogens, which are ashwagandha, astragalus, cordyceps, maca, maitake, rushi, shishanda, and chaga mushrooms. <clears throat> and then your probiotics and digestive enzymes, which are the yakin root, chicory root, um, and all of those kind of things too. And those are coming from plant things. So this really, Shakeology isn't a protein shake. Shakeology isn't, it just happens to be a shake because that's how it's best preserved is to freeze dry these ingredients. And obviously I can't ship you a bag of like all these ingredients, but the goal is to get all of those micronutrients through plant sources. And if you look at the ingredients, like you're seeing, that's what it's actually made up of. So being really cautious and to understand that we don't need quick fixes with shakes and we don't need, you know, all these pressed pill vitamins that give you all these kind of things. We need whole real foods in balance and to have an understanding that we need carbs, fats, and proteins, all of them in good sources. And we need vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and all those things in good sources and combined, you get your big picture. Then we have to think, okay, I live a normal American life. Like, how am I supposed to do this? I can't be perfect with my food all the time because I have kids and I have all this kind of stuff. So that's why I say I love the portion six food list. Okay, stock your house with that as much as you can. Measure out your food when you're plating your food and do the best that you can. And spend time tracking that this week and seeing where you're at with things. And then say, oh, wow, I notice I'm really not giving as many servings of veggies as I normally should be. So then say, well, maybe you can trade out one of your snacks for some fruits and vegetables, okay? Um, same thing with your vitamins and nutrients. You don't need to be taking, you know, vitamin supplements and all that kind of stuff. And that's why I encourage you, like, to have your psychology and to see how you feel at the end of the month when you're getting extra micronutrients, what that does for your body. Because it's not about weight loss. It's really about that overall health and feeding your cells right. And so that's something that takes a little bit of time. But those are when you like start to feel that energy. And interestingly enough, um, my digestive system is better. My hair, skin, and nails are really good. Um, my, I don't have, I'm not as anemic. I used to be anemic. And even just the taste bud changes, your taste buds actually um, will change over time. The more nutrients your body has in it, and the more you get out the crap. Um, and so like, I don't even care about Halloween candy, really. I like, I had a couple yesterday, but I don't care that much. So just really thinking about that, your body wants to fight with you and your body wants to like be fed well, but think about your life. Don't go crazy with stuff and think about what to give it rather than what to restrict yourself from living from a perspective of what can I give my body to make it healthy rather than what can I tell myself not to eat? It just, I mean, negative stuff doesn't work even with our kids, right? So I would love to hear your feedback. I mean, this is a little bit of a longer video, but I wanted to give you guys that overall perspective so we can all be on the same page with things and really have that good understanding. So I love your feedback guys, and I will talk to you later.